There we go. Good morning, everybody. As I fill in. Good morning, everyone filling in so far. Hope you guys are having a good Thursday. We're just going to give this a minute or two for people to fill in, and then we're going to get started. And while we do wait, I'm going to launch a poll here, too. So this is just going to ask if you're already familiar with SCW View Station, and if not, or if you've used it frequently, or if you haven't ever used it, or just use it once in a while, um, be good to know. Appreciate everyone filling that out. Another thing um, I should mention too, there is like a Q&A button on Zoom. If you're not familiar with Zoom webinars, you can click that Q&A button, ask a question. Um, I'll take, I'll stop at points to, to answer the questions. And then after we're do done with the um, presentation and the, in the live demo, we'll also have some time for Q&A as well. If you'd like to stay around and, and ask some questions and um, be happy to answer as much as I can. Give another minute or two here and we will get started. Thank you for showing up today and taking your time out to watch this webinar. Especially for all those PST people out there. Over yeah. Here in California. So I feel you. You're yeah. It's 8, 8 a.m. for you. <laughs> yeah. You have, a, you have a minute or two to grab some coffee. <laughs> Starting even up there. We got almost a third for each of them. So good audience mix. No. This um, webinar will also be recorded, so if you need to see it after or want to review something, um, we'll get that recording to everybody who's participating, and that way you can have it. And of course, um, if you guys have any questions about this, if you're a current customer that um, with SCW and you want to learn a little bit more, help get this set up with us, um, we'll be able to set you up a ticket with our support team to be able to get this up and running for you too as well. So. Um, yeah, I think it's been a couple minutes here, so we can go ahead and get started. So first off, I just want to thank everyone for, for participating today and joining this webinar. Um, I know everyone's very busy and taking the time out here on a Thursday to, to view this. We really do appreciate it. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. And before I go too, too far ahead, I'd like to just talk a little bit about SCW. Um, you're not familiar with us, we're a value-driven company that provides end-to-end -end security solutions. So anything from video surveillance, like we're showing today, to access control, and a little bit of everything in between. And um, for most of these products, you can, we can provide nationwide installation. Um, and for some of them as well, if you prefer, you can install it yourself in a do-it-yourself fashion. Um, and one of the things that makes SCW so different too is just our world-class support. Um, I could sit here and spend a lot of time talking about our support team, but some of the best in the world and um, they can help you out from anything from technical support issues to just system operation, all US based, really great people on it. And that's, we consider ourselves a little bit of a support company first and then the products come after. So now let's jump into SCW View Station. I guess actually maybe I should uh, introduce myself a little bit. I'm James, I'm with the product team here at SCW. Um, I've been here for 
just just over 10 years and um, I help with the product selection as well as some of the product marketing here and happy to answer questions after this too on in terms of anything else you might have that may be unrelated to view station or related so um, but let's jump into SW view station and really what is it well it's a piece of software for Windows and Mac and this software is called the VMS or CMS and that stands for camera management system or video management system. And in a nutshell, it just means that you can view all of your cameras from one single portal. Um, ViewStation is compatible with our Admiral, Imperial, and Corporal line of recorders. And so if you do have any third party NVRs or you'll, you'll need to have um, Admiral, Imperial, or Corporal lines replace those. Um, but if you have third party cameras, they will work with it as long as you have one of our NVRs. Um, and the key point of SW View Station is that you can view multiple systems simultaneously. And that means even from multiple locations. So if you're used to, to being on the web browser and having to go to multiple sites through the web browser, this is going to save you a lot of time and make your, your experience much, much better. Um, and beyond the browser too, when you compare it to the browser, it's got significantly more features um, that can be beneficial for everyday operations that um, we'll showcase a little bit later on too. So let's talk about some of the key features first off that kind of apply to everyone. Um, and the first thing is that ViewStation can view up to 64 cameras live simultaneously. So you can split that out into multiple windows and everything. We'll talk about that in a minute, but 64 cameras live is, is significantly higher than the browser. And then you can add up to 64 different devices. So a device is going to be a NVR, or if you're adding cameras directly to ViewStation, that would count as a device as well. Um, and then you can add, add up to 512 channels as well. So um, this is good for majority of customers here. You're never going to have to look at another um, piece of software. And ViewStation also has zero fees. So there's no cost to download it initially. There's no yearly licensing fee. There's no channel count fee or anything like that. So this comes included with our Admiral Imperial and Corporal line of recorders. For who should be interested in SW View Station is a, is a good question. Um, you know, some people are perfectly happy with the browser and some people want more from it. And um, some of the people who should be most interested in SW View Station are gonna be if you have multiple NVRs or locations. So that's part of what this webinar is about, is about, is about that. So, um, you know, if you do have multiple locations, then this is gonna be a, a great piece of software for you. Um, it's also really good for people who have large systems. So if you're over say 16 to 32 cameras, you know, the browser sort of limited, it's, it's around 16 cameras where you can view it live. So, um, and the other, kind of group of people who should be interested are gonna be people who have like higher end viewing requirements. And we'll, we'll talk about what that view station offers when it comes to that. Um, but you know, if, you, if you're looking at the browser and it, you know, the browser does it all in order of the system in terms of camera one, two, three, it's gonna be in that grid. If you wanna customize that, you wanna make things, you wanna see certain cameras very quickly, view station is really good at that. And so let's talk first about the multi-location benefits. Um, the first benefit is that ViewStation is one single platform. So this allows you to view all of your systems together. So whether you have one location, two, three locations, um, or you have 50 locations, you can open up ViewStation and then have access to all of them just from opening up the program. Um, one of my other favorite features that we're seeing here in this animated GIF here is the save view function. So what this is, is you can create your own view and I'll show it when we get to the live demo part as well, but you can save your, create a view and then easily bring it up. So some of our clients will use things like cash registers. They have all their cash registers on one view or they have all their, their lobbies on one view, et cetera. So the possibilities are really limitless. I will show more of it, but definitely one of my favorite features. Um, it also works with the Star for Live cloud relay service that's built into our NVRs. So this allows you in a nutshell to very easily have remote access without having to do port forwarding um, or having a, a private corporate VPN if you don't have that. Um, it can literally take two or three seconds to actually set up. You can scan a QR code. It's, it's really great 
And when you're talking about multi-location, um, this allows you to share access in Leanne VR very, very easily. So um, I'll show you a little bit more about that too. But if, if you are multi-location, this, uh, this is going to be something that can change the game if you're just using IP addresses currently. Um, and then the last benefit in terms of one of the key ones, I should say, is the, the bandwidth friendliness of, of Ustation. Um, all of our cameras on our systems are customizable. So when you're looking at, say, 64 cameras, you could be using you know, as low as 32 megabits per second. Um, so completely customizable for our IT people out there. You might know what that means. But in short, if you don't, it can use very little amount of bandwidth. It's not going to crush your internet. Um, so it can work with varieties of internet, whether it's super fast fiber or, you know, just standard cable internet. Talking about the large system. So if you're somebody who just has a big system, you know, where they're 16 cameras up kind of situation, um, obviously key one, 64 cameras live simultaneously. That's a big one for anybody. Um, Multi-monitor capable too. So you see in this picture here, you can have two different tabs, so to speak, and put them on one of your monitors. So if you're on a computer that has two, three, four monitors, you can kind of set your layout there and have a really good display for that. Um, and we have custom grid options and sequen sequencing options. So if you want to have certain a very specific set of cameras and cer certain sizes and everything like that, you can really get in there, dig in, and get all of your settings that you need to do. Um, and then sequencing means that it can kind of flip between cameras. So if that's a, something that you want to do, some people like that. And a lot more, I'll talk about that. There's EMAP functions, et cetera, when we get to the live demo. And speaking of which, we're kind of there too. Um, Dylan, do we have any questions before we, we keep going? You know, I'm not seeing any, oh, I just got one. Yeah, we got a question from Josh. I'm getting a ton of lag with View Station when used on a local computer on the same network. Can you talk about why that might be? Or is that better suited for a support ticket? When yeah. I open a camera, it goes black for 20 seconds. And when I pan a camera, sometimes it takes 10 seconds to respond. Hmm. I'd, imagine, I'd imagine a support ticket, yeah. Yeah, definitely a support ticket. And if, if you know, and we can take a look at that and see what's going on. That's not how it should be operating. Um, especially on a local network, that should be pretty pretty much instantaneous. So um, we'll get a support ticket set up for you after this, and then we can see what might be going on. Um, obviously, there's, there's a bunch of different factors, but we can look into all that. Yeah, yeah, Josh, I'll go ahead and create that ticket on our end and you should hear from support. And then I got another question from Steve. Uh, can you do any configuration of the remote NVRs through ViewStation? There is some configuration. I will show it here in just a second, but um, the, uh, the main part of that is uh, we can, it's through, still through the web browser, but I'll show you how easy it is to access those settings from ViewStation as well. All righty. Another question in from Corey. Is there a feature enhancement of the Live View tab to be able to rename? So I think you might mean like for um like to be able to rename the cameras and yeah you can rename the cameras from from um sme view station as well and i, I can show that to you uh, when we get into the live demo part as well and th thank you guys for the questions as well and yeah definitely you keep them up and i can we kind of hold them until you break um james and yeah, kind of run through them all good, at once so let's move on to the live demo part and what we're looking at right here is sw view station so um First thing I usually like to cover with ViewStation is going into the device management part, you know, the, the less fun part, but something we all have to do. And just to cover that really quickly is device management. So this is where we're going to add our NVRs and where we're going to add or remove them. Um, and there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can add it by IP address. So if I click add up here, I can add it, whether it's a local device. So if, all, if your NVR lives on the local network, and you know you're only accessing it from that computer then you can add it just by the local ip address um, this will also work if you have a private or corporate vpn set up to where you're you know remotely ac accessing some local devices on your network you can set it up here as well um, and then if we're i'm remote today but if i was on location i could also 
do an auto search here and find any of the devices that are on the network and then add them, put in the credentials. So it's super easy to get added if it is a local device. Um, and then for remote, you know, you can, you have the VPN option as well as, you know, um, anything else you want to do to get that remote. But I would say for a lot of our customers, more and more of them are using the, the Star for Live Cloud Relay service. And so um, my favorite, this is one of my favorite features of kind of the ecosystem that we've got here is that I simply log in. You can see I'm already logged in here under my James SW account and it imports the MBRs that are available to me. And so I don't have to go in, you know, if I get a new computer or whatever, I just simply have to log in and my devices are available to me. Um, this is the same thing for those who are, are familiar. You can also do this on the mobile app. So I log in on my mobile app with the Star for Live credentials and it imports all my MBRs as well. So really simple. Um, and then for our couple with a question we had from um, Corey earlier in terms of like, what can you configure from ViewStation? Well, I can hit this configuration button and I can adjust kind of basic things like the encoding settings, some of the image settings and OSD, but most of the other things are still on the web. Um, and nice thing about ViewStation is it does give you very easy access to the web interface though. So if you notice this E button here, I can click that and it popped open on my other monitor here, but this will give me access to the web interface where I can go to setup and then adjust whatever settings I want to from there. So um, this, is, this is for any NVR you have on that service. Um, so super simple to get to those settings. And you know, if I need to change, say, the recording schedule from, from constant to motion like we have here, you know, you can just click that E, it logs you in automatically because you're you've got the credentials through Star for Live, and that's that's how easy it can be. So um, the other thing with Star for Live I wanted to mention too, especially since this is a multi-location demo, is kind of how simple it is to share. So what I'm going to bring up here is our is the web management side of it. So this is where you can see, number one, you can see what devices you have on your account. And then number two, you can share and see who has access. So for me to share a device with somebody, all they have to do is have a Star for Live account, which is free to sign up for. There's no additional charges for this service as well, I should mention. And I can go to the share button over here. And then all I have to do is put in their email address. So if I want to share this with maybe Michael, who's our support manager, I can put that in there. And then I can choose some like remarks. So I'll put support manager. And then I can either share it by function, which you know gives you specific things there, or I can set it by role. So um, I've got some roles on our NVR for this particular one, our four channel NVR. And I can share this with certain ones. So for example, our um, HR can access playback, but they can't access live view. You can get very granular with this. Um, Whereas the guards might be the opposite, right? They may only be able to access on um, live view, but not playback. And you can kind of do it on a per camera basis as well. So for example, if you have an employees who only should be able to see the outside cameras, but maybe not the inside cameras, or there's certain cameras you don't want them to see, you can set that roll up and then share it to them. So once I hit, we'll put them as a manager here, I can hit share, and that's not his actual account username, but um, we can share that he will have access as soon as he logs back into ViewStation or his mobile app as well. So, and then, so sharing is very easy. And then what about also revoking access too? So if I go to my sharing tab up here, we're going to see the list of people who I've shared access to. So if there's anybody in here who I go, hmm, I don't want them to have access for whatever reason anymore. Um, I simply have to locate them. I can search by either their email um, or the device that they have, et cetera, tons of filtering options for that. Um, but you know, look at, I'm looking to look at Ben here, who's our sales director. Um, and I'm gonna, don't want him to have access for whatever reason, right? So I can hit the delete button over here. It's gonna ask me if I wanna delete him. If I hit okay, he's no longer gonna have access to our system. And so in a nutshell, this allows you to really easily share and revoke access and know who has access without having to share, you know, create accounts on the NVR, share usernames and passwords and, and deal with that. So it should really simplify if you've got a lot of people who, who have access to this system. Um, 
or you need to give access to a lot of people, this is going to really simplify your rollout for that as well. And we have some guides and everything on this too that will go over kind of what you can do with it. And um, I should mention as well, again, that this, there's no additional fees or, or anything like that. So um, just kind of want to cover that really quickly. And if you do have any other questions, do we have any questions about that before we go forward though? I uh, just wanted to clarify, it looked like Corey uh, was trying to clarify when he was asking about, uh, is there a feature enhancement of the live view tab to be able to rename? He's talking about the tab itself. So like renaming like this to like... That's what I was thinking, yeah. Okay. I don't think so right now. I have to look into that. That's not the first time I've had that request, but um, I definitely will will see about that. I can see if that would be pretty useful. Yeah, Corey, if you, if you wanted to specify further, if it wasn't that, just feel free to ask. Otherwise, we can follow up afterwards. No, no problem. All right. And so, yeah, we'll have more info on to, we can get to you guys in terms of um, the, the cloud operation, and everything like that. It definitely is makes the, the remote access and the remote management of users significantly easier. So. Perfect. All right. And let's go ahead and move into the more fun aspects like the live view. And so. As I mentioned, we, we saw on, on my device management screen, I have four NVRs added to me. There's four different separate units and two different locations. And first thing I like to showcase is just the grid options. You can see we have grids that are, you know, single camera all the way up to 64 with a bunch of options in between um, with various sizes and everything like that. And then you can create your own ones too. Like you see, I've got this um, seven grid one, which has three big ones and four small ones. So, you know, whatever kind of idea you have in terms of what you want for your live view, you can do that. And so I'll just set it to something more standard, like the nine grid here. And, you know, to bring up an individual NVR is really simple. So you see my NVRs here on the list here. I just have to go to them and double click them. And that will bring them up live. And here's our second one here. This is our, our main office. This is the warehouse location. And this is our Greensboro, North Carolina location as well. And so really easy to cycle through these and be able to see them individually if you like as well. Um, but as I mentioned in the presentation part, the best part I think about ViewStation is of course the fact that you can view these simultaneously as well. So if I wanna say bring up 36 cameras and we will go ahead and double click kind of the folder part here. You'll see that I'm able to bring up multiple NVRs from multiple locations really easily as well too. And then it goes a little bit beyond that too. So if I want to say close this out and I want to create my own view here, um, I can make this eight channel one here and I can do searches from there. I can bring up each camera individually so I can you know look at the NVR and see the models or the camera names, we typically have them by model, but obviously for most people, you're going to want to name them. And I can just search for cameras here too. So if I want to type in a keyword, like say lobbies, I can do that and I can just drag and drop these cameras over. So let's grab um, maybe this one over here and drag it over there. And I'll drag these ones to kind of the side here. So these are just lobby cameras from different locations. And I can rearrange these however I want as well. So if I want, say, this one to be the big one, I can do that. Um, and going into my one of my favorite features, I guess, of SME View Station is if this is a, bit, a, a bunch of cameras or a grid that I want to see very often, um, I can also save this as well. So there's a Save View button down here, which if I click that, I can name it. I'll just name it Lobbies. And that view has been saved. And if I go over to the left here, we'll see our view option. And if I click that, we'll see under custom views, we got a bunch of different options here. So um, including the lobbies one I just created. So if I bring up our couple of them over here, I've got sort of our main set of cameras, the more important ones and the ones that I wanna see from our actual location. And I've got another one that's entrance cameras. So this is actually using that custom grid I showed you earlier, we've kind of got 
three big ones and four small ones. So this is kind of some of the key cameras I might want to keep an eye on throughout the course of a day. Um, I've got a hallway one here too. So bringing it up to here's that lobbies one we just created. And here's a set of outside cameras. And so this feature can be used in a lot of different ways. So, you know, if you're multi-location, for example, one of our one of our first multi-location customers that comes to my mind, they have a, something like 150 fast food franchise locations and they'll put in, you know, regional cash register views. And so the Southeast cash register, they're able to see everything that's going on with that cash register at any given time. Um, we can also think if you're a multi-story building, so you can do floor number one or you're a multi-building location, you can do building A, building B, um, the possibilities with this are, are, are pretty endless in terms of what you can do with it. Um, and, you know, you can you guys can probably think of some ones that you can do there. So um, the other things about Live View I'll mention really quickly here, too, is I mentioned a little earlier, but if you're a multi-location, bandwidth is, is probably a concern. Or even if you're not a multi-location, bandwidth is always somewhat of a concern. And all of our cameras are customizable, so you can see, like, as I hover over here, you can see that this is using about 200 kilobits per second, 300 kilobits per, se per second. You can set this even lower if you want to. Um, so point being, again, if you're not in IT, that this is something that's not going to, you know, overload, shouldn't overload your network, um, assuming you've got kind of average speed internet in the U.S. So, um, and that's using a combination of the different views that we have from our camera. So, um Another feature I really like is you see here, we're looking at the third stream of our camera. If I were to bring this one up, our new Scout 5.0 camera, a super wide 180 degree camera, it will switch it over to the mainstream. And then you, you guys can see the quality difference when you go there. So, you know, if you do see something happening and you want to get a better, bigger look and also a clearer look, it will allow you to do that. And then when I double click out of it, it will switch it back to the third stream as well. So, you know, this is an optional thing. You can turn that on or off and, it's kind of completely customizable as well. So um, I see, think we have a couple of questions. Um, yep, got, got a few, I can run through them. Uh, so we've got one from Eric and he's asking, can you bring in older SCW and VRs into ViewStation? So anything that's an app, so anything that's we've been selling since 2018, which would be the Admiral series, the uh, Imperial series and the Corporal series a little later, but all of those will work with it, even if it's, say, an Admiral V1. So those are the ones from, like, 2018. Um, they'll be able to work with it. Now, our older lines, like the Vanguard, Executive, and Networker lines, they will require um, you to replace the NVR in order to work with ViewStation. But most of the time, all those cameras are compatible with the, the Admirals and stuff like that. So you'll be able to use that um, those cameras still. So you would have to replace the NVR, but generally the cameras are okay. Got another one from Corey. Uh, we have over 120 cameras from two NVRs. Why the limitation of 64 cameras in two live view screens? Um, so it's usually down to like the decoding processes on the computer and stuff like that. Doing 64 cameras is is very intensive. So, um, you know, there are people who, you know, if they have a lot of those cameras, you can also potentially look into some other of our solutions, like the decoders that we offer um, that can do like a video wall and stuff like that. So you can kind of combine some of the solutions there for um, to get a lot of camera views if, you, if that's something you want to have. Um, so it's mostly down to processing power in, in general. So. Okay. Awesome. That makes sense. Um, and now Rodolfo, is there a limit on the quantity of views? Not that I've ever reached. Um, actually, I don't know if there actually is one, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can have dozens and dozens and dozens. And uh, but I, I I will double check that and get you know if you want to create a ticket for that, I'll make sure I get the exact number if there is one. Cool, oh, awesome. Yeah, if you find it, Rodolfo, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep trying. Um, yeah, and from here too, I won't go too in deep, uh, too in depth. But if I bring up this camera again here, um, and we see the the bar down here. Um, this allows you to create snapshots. If you're watching it live, you can also record directly to your computer. So, you know, you're somebody who's maybe a security personnel and you see something going on, you start recording because it allows you to have the footage without necessarily jumping into playback. Um, we also have digital zoom as well. So if you're 
you know, something's kind of far off and you want to see what's going on there, you can digitally zoom. So you'd simply hit that button, draw the box, and then you can do that. And then you can use your mouse wheel to kind of zoom in and zoom out if you want to. So that can be useful, especially if you've got, you know, wide camera with high resolution. Um, and then a lot of our cameras also have microphones and speakers these days. So if you want to listen to that microphone, there's the unmute button here. You'll be able to listen to the camera there. And then if it has a speaker and you want to talk to somebody who's near that camera, you can click that. It will use your microphone on your computer to have like a two-way audio conversation with somebody near the camera. And then we've got instant playback, which just kind of goes back five minutes. So again, really useful for your guards and everything like that. And then if you have some of our NVR support POS, which is point of sale, they can kind of input the, the text on there. If you get everything configured, they can showcase that or not showcase it. Um, and then that's kind of the main options from that bar there. But just to give you an idea that you can take screenshots and, and everything from there as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of the main main features here of, of Live View. Um, there's obviously even more, like I mentioned, we can do sequencing where you can have this just switch between as well, which helps kind of maybe with some of the, the limitations of the 64 cameras. If you want to do something like that, you could have it, you know, cycle through sets of cameras and everything too. So um, if there's no other questions, I'll go ahead and move into the playback um, side of it. And for playback, um, the UI is pretty similar to Live View, right? We've got our cameras here on the left. I can filter through here as well. And, you know, not too much different from the web if you're, or the NVR directly, if you're familiar with that. So it should be a nice familiar experience for you. Um, but if I just search by camera name here, I'll look for this PTZ we've got and I'll click that camera and then click search. And this is a camera that is recording when it detects people in vehicles. And so um, like most other cameras we've got uh, or the other, the other setups we have, We've got a timeline based grid here. So you can see this goes from um, today the 14th um, to uh, about 11.30, which is today's current time. Um, and you can see that I can move my mouse wheel over here to zoom in on these and see more individual clips. So you can see if I wanna go maybe check more around 11 o'clock here, I can zoom in and the time frame gets smaller. So if you're trying to look for things, you can do that. And then from there, you can just kind of click. So if I click over here to say 840, um, it will jump to that time frame. And from here, I can go ahead and zoom back into it. And I can do like a fast forward if I want to up to 16 times speed. And then I can also jump ahead if I want to. And it looks like our triad location is a little slow this morning. We'll give it a second here to catch up. Um, fast forwarding, especially remotely, I should mention too, is legitimately fast forwarding. So it's grabbing 16 times the playback speed. It's not like skipping um, um, like frames or anything like that. So sometimes that can trip up there. Let me maybe switch to a different NVR. As a, or even uh, while you're waiting for that, James, got a couple yeah. questions, maybe good timing. Yeah, good. Um, a question from Joseph. Does ViewStation allow downloading on an Apple device? I know the browser only lets us download via Windows. Um, no, good question. Yeah, this is uh, ViewStation looks essentially identical to what we're seeing here on Mac. I'm actually mostly a Mac user, so it looks um, the same way as we as we do right now. We're seeing so it is is Mac compatible as well. Just we'll get you a link after this um, to to read more. Uh, and then another question from Corey. So how did you highlight the car tag or uh, should I say bracket the back of the car? Or I should uh, say bracket the back of the car. Sorry. Uh, so, so that last screen you were like you had highlighted the car potentially. Oh, uh, so this is some of our cameras, um, really most of them that are almost all of them that are eight megapixel and up, as well as the some of our four megapixels can do um, either intrusion detection or line crossing. And when it does that, it detects it only when there's a person there or a vehicle. So it's, it's customized so it can turn off and on them. And so um, this, this, these particular ones are set to where it only records when we detect vehicles and people. So, you know, if there's, I don't know, cats that come by the, the camera view or something like that, we're not going to actually see those. So um, 
hopefully that answers. So it's just a matter of configuring that, which um, we do have some guides we can send you to you on that. And we can give you info on what cameras support that as well. Yeah, so from playback, like I mentioned, you can fast forward and everything like that. And uh, for certain ones here as well, you can see that on the right, we do have our list of camera um, tags here. So you can see these are all uh, VCA events, as we call them. So that's going to be the, the people vehicle. Um, and I can go ahead and I can jump to these as well. So I see that this one is 925 to 926 here, just about a little over 30 seconds. So I can double click that you'll see that it jumps over to here and we'll be able to see this, this clip coming up. And our local friendly Jeep coming by. And if I, if I want this, this clip here, I have a couple different options to pull this clip. So you've got the scissors option, which we can see down here. You just go over here, click that scissors and you can choose to let it play through. You can fast forward everything. Um, you can even click ahead on the timeline and we'll just select that time. Uh, but I'm going to let this play through since I haven't seen this one yet. So this looks like somebody's getting out. Oh, they just opened the door. What's going on? All right. They're leaving the car and maybe going in here. And he's out of there. So I'm going to end the clip here. And from here, I can customize this. So if in the event, maybe I was a little late, I can go ahead and add a couple seconds to this. Um, or if maybe I clicked it too early and I need to add a couple more seconds to it, I can do that. Um, once I hit OK here, this is going to download to our com my computer here and as an MP4 file so that you can play it. This, these play in Windows Media Player or QuickTime if you're on Apple, uh, Mac. Max, um, and you can share that however you want. So this is gonna save it to your computer. It's not like you have to go to NVR or anything like that to, to grab it at further. Um, so once this is done, I'll open that up and show it. And like I said, I am, I am remote from all these offices. So depending on our internet connection at the time, the speed will, will vary, of course. And I'll go to the completed section here, open up this folder which did as well open on my other screen here. Bring it over. So here's that clip. So if I just double click it, should ask me or bring it up in Windows Media Player, I guess. I think that's what it's called these days. And here's this clip. So, you know, you can share this, put it on Google Drive or upload it to this to services as you need to and you know would save it to the cloud if you need to for for safekeeping whatever you need to do with it so we'll close these out here um the other option for for playback too is if i right click here and go to download um we'll see here that we have the same files that we see on the right all these kind of clips here um i can select those clips too so if i don't even if i know that i have an instance say around eight o'clock, right? I can look at these clips and I can see, okay, this one was 7.58, this one was eight o'clock, this one was 8.07, another one around 8.07, and the next one's not till 8.18. I can download all these clips um, without necessarily having to review them or anything like that, if you just wanna have those for safekeeping. And then, and you can do as, as much as you want throughout the course of the day or all of them if you want to. Um, the other option is, that you can just select your time period too. So if I say like, okay, I want everything from 7.30 over here to 8.30, I can do that. And since this is a camera that's only recording clips when people in vehicle are detected, um, you know, I'm gonna get all those clips to me. If this was a camera that's recording, say 24 seven, it's gonna be that full hour of footage. So it just really depends on how you set these cameras to record, which is of course also on a per camera basis as well. And um, yeah, then the same thing over here, you can kind of do the same thing without even necessarily bringing it up. So if you want it from multiple cameras, you can do that too. Um, you can select uh, multiple cameras and select the time period or look at the clips and then download them from there as well. So you have a lot of options on how you get that footage to you. And you know, from there, it's your footage that you can share and it's, it's off the NVR, it won't be overridden or anything like that. So um, 
I think that's kind of the main look at at, at the the general playback. Um, do we have any other questions so far? Yeah, we had one kind of on the topic of saving. Uh, can you just save directly to Google Drive? So I'm not too sure on that. Um, you can change what file location it's saved at if you if you go to the oh, excuse me control panel and system config here. Um, you can change the folder to wherever you want. So if I go to the recording section here, you can do that. So I know I feel like on Google Drive you can um, like have it almost like it's a it's a normal Windows folder. So if you can do that, it, you might be able to move it over to there if you want to. Otherwise, you know you you, you might have to copy and paste it over. Yeah, I think they call it a uh, Google Drive offline, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think Dropbox is like, similar. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as it's something that like Windows can see, um, then you can you can move that location to there if you want. Rodolfo, we can um, do some quick research to support and get back to you via email. That's a good answer there. Now, it looks like that's it, James. All right. Well, um, that's usually my kind of go through with all um, with with ViewStation. I should mention we have, you know, this is kind of only scratching the service to some degree. Um, we also have functions, like I mentioned, sort of when it comes to the elevated feature set in the browser like this EMAP function, for example, I think it's pretty cool. Um, this allows you to either grab your, your blueprints or floor plans, or like I did here, just grab a screenshot off of, of Google Maps and sort of place the cameras on a geographic location. Um, this is pretty good for like your guards or somebody who's especially maybe newer to like, or if you just got a really big facility, sometimes it's very difficult to understand like what cameras are looking where. So this allows you to do it. So I can see like this camera over here is, is we've got some motion being detected um, and I can double click this or where there was being detected. And I can actually bring up the live view here as well and see it. Um, I can make it full screen if I want to, um, or I can close this out and um, I can clear the alarms and everything like that too. So it just gives you a, a way of being able to see, you know, what's going on throughout the course of a day. So if you kind of want to do something like this, you could do that as well. Um, and this can be its own tab too. So when I mentioned the multi-monitor um, options you have, you can maybe make this one of your multi-monitor, you know, um, displays if you want to, along with your live view, et cetera. So um, just another one of those kind of in-depth features that we have that um, as we kind of go through with this as well, um, if you're a new customer and you want to learn more, certainly let us know. Or if you're a pre-existing customer and you're um, using or you're seeing ViewStation maybe for the first time or you haven't used it um, very frequently, our support team can walk you through this stuff very well as too. We also have more formal training options if you're interested in that too, that we could get you information on um, as well. But um, yeah, that's kind of my usual run through of, of ViewStation. And if we don't have any any other questions or anything before we give you guys your time back? Uh, I think that's it. I think uh, Corey was looking for the EMAP, then he found it, which is great. Okay. Uh, me being in marketing realizes we need a good in-depth article about this feature here. It's very, very cool. It is cool. Yeah, I like it. Uh, um, I think that that's it for now for questions, unless everyone, anyone's got anything else. Otherwise... Um, the follow-ups, just to confirm, I'm going to follow up with uh, you, Josh, on the lag with you station. We're going to get a support ticket logged for you. Uh, Rodolfo, you get a couple questions just to confirm uh, with the limit on quantity of views and saving directly to drive. Um, Corey, you had that car tag question. Um, we're going to just kind of touch base on that. Uh, and then Joseph with the uh, Apple devices and, and downloading. We'll just touch base with you after that as well. After this. Yeah, we can send the download links, which by the way, I should mention you you can download ViewStation directly off our of our website in the download section. Um, so we can send that, we'll get that link to you um probably in the follow-up email as well. So um long term, I do know we're we're putting that on the Apple Mac app store, I should say. Um so that will be there in the in the near future, I believe, and then eventually on the Microsoft store too. So it's a little easier to download and get updates and stuff like that. That's on our roadmap for sure. So um yeah and I, I just want to thank everyone for their time today and and thank you for joining in all the great questions that you guys had and um if you do have any other questions feel free to reach out to us me my the support team as well um anybody here at scw if you're on the pre-sale side they'll be able to answer questions on this too and figure out how it's going to work for you whether it's you know through ViewStation or some of the other programs we have too so 
thank you again. And um, if there's no other questions. I guess we're good to go. Uh, and John, sorry, you are you will all get a recording of this uh, right after. So just to confirm. Awesome. And that's it. All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next one. That hopefully should be in about a month. Um, and if there's any webinar um, ideas that you guys have or want to learn more about, definitely let us know in that follow up. We'll we'll we'll, we'll listen, and and we'll this is a new series for us, so we'll be excited to to explain more about our product services or features and functions. So thank you guys and, and have a great rest of your day. See you guys.